Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Smitty here. I thought I'd give you a little insight to what I do during the day, and that is work on cars. Okay, this customer, the complaint is, oops, just unplugged the tech tube. Um, it's got a battery light on, and uh, the gauge fluctuates a bunch. He states that it's got a check engine light, but he's not worried about it. But here you go. If you look at it over there in the corner, battery lights on and if you watch the volt gauge it'll bounce back and forth and it also needs an oil pressure sending unit when you see one of these trucks that the the gauge is pegged on 80 the oil pressure sending unit's bad but he's not concerned with that right now we'll mention it but he's not concerned with it all right so let's get the let's get the scanner plugged back in there's a misconception that you plug in the scanner and it tells you everything that's wrong with a vehicle and that that is oh so far from the truth now the customer sedated that they put an alternator on it because they thought that's what was wrong with it so let's build this truck out here uh, you can't already see it there you go it's an 05 light truck chevrolet c because it's two-wheel drive and let's go to body it's got the up level radio with automatic temp control all right we're going to go to ip look at your data okay if you notice the battery voltage is 14 above 14 but see it how it shorts out like that we're talking to the instrument panel cluster right now but look at your ignition one voltage see how low it is that's why the battery lights on so we have to diagnose that ignition one voltage concern now gms from 2003 to 2006 somewhere in there they had problems with the clusters big problems with the clusters the gauge would quit working there's solder joints inside there now obviously here where i work you're not allowed to repair them there is ways to repair these clusters without doing all that but we're obviously supposed to turn it in so but that's what we got to diagnose i pulled the schematic for it kind of hard to read i'm sure through the phone um now it looks like it cut off but here's your alternator and there goes to the charge indicator. Now there's a possibility that this aftermarket alternator that the customer's installed is faulty. But we still have to diagnose the ignition one voltage problem because that will turn on the, the light anything. So uh, we're gonna stop there. I'm gonna do a little more research. Well, let's see here. I can do that while we're here. Let's look at instrument panel. Then we wanna look at schematics. instrument panel schematics and let's go to the power and ground first because we're looking for an ignition one voltage source and here you go right here so we want to we want to look at this terminal right here so we're going to have to get to the back of the cluster or we can go right to the ignition e fuse that says ignition one voltage but that says ignition e which is fine we can test the voltage right there at that cluster so we're going to print this so p that's probably not going to come out right so what's windows 10 has some flaws when you're working with uh, gm's service information but we need to find this ignition one voltage so we're going to test it at the fuse box at that ignition e fuse so let me get that set up we'll be right back okay we have the power probe hooked up here and what we're going to test is that terminal right there well we're actually going across this fuse here so we're going to check this fuse first and that is ignition e fuse which is right there so let's test right here at this terminal and it says we got 14.2 14.3 on both sides of that fuse which is about equal when it comes back up here to what battery voltage is there so we're going to check this terminal right here at the back of the ipc now hopefully i can get this thing out far enough to where i can check it because sometimes these things don't like to move but we'll see 
So let me get you set up in there and we'll check that out. Okay, I wanted to show you this. Hopefully it'll do it again. Um, I came in here and of course the ABS light and the brake light were on and all the gauges went down to zero. It's like somebody shut the... Let's sit here and watch it here just a second. There it goes. Okay, let's see what happens. We look at the voltage gauge. Watch the voltage gauge. And that's just like what the Tech 2 is doing, our scan tool. It'll drop out and that ABS light will be on because it'll, the, um, it'll set a loss of communication code. I see the airbag light came on too. That means it's losing communication. It'll usually set a U code in the across the board in the computer. It wasn't recording it, it did it. And the uh, fuel gauge was it empty, the oil pressure gauge was it empty, and the, the volt gauge went all the way down to nine. And it looks like it is. Only half of the speedometers lit up which sometimes that's just a bulb and sometimes it's an LED. It's been so long, I don't remember which one it is. I think it's LEDs on these. Well, I don't know if it's gonna do it. Again, I apologize for the noise from the compressor. Not much I can do about that. It's probably 50 yards away from my stall. I do it all the time. Well, apparently, since I'm watching it, it's not going to do it. So, let me get this cluster out and we'll see where we're at. Hey, I got it to do it. See what it just did there? It's so intermittent. All right. Hang on. All right, I don't know how stable this is going to be, but we'll try it. And I imagine it's telling you to change the oil because when the cluster jacks up, anytime on a GM product that that it sees a temperature, engine temperature that's excessive, put the oil pressure or the uh, it will uh, reset the oil life monitor to zero. Because anytime you overheat, of course it cooks the oil. Okay, terminal B9. This is the one we're after. It should be this pink wire right here. Okay, so we want to, let's go ahead and start it up. Okay, we're testing this pink, pink wire right here. And if you notice, I know it's upside down. There you go. That's on that pink terminal. We've got battery voltage there. So that means that the cluster is bad. My inputs going into the cluster are good. Just it's not displaying right. So that's why it's turning on the light. So, this gentleman needs a cluster. So, that's how you diagnose properly. It's not as easy as just hooking up a scanner and checking it out. You actually have to do some leg work. And unfortunately, that's the way it works. And almost all of it, our stuff is that way anymore. And it's getting more and more complicated. So, all that aside, Thanks for joining. I hope this uh, was informational for you. There's more to come, so y'all have a great day. See ya.